What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 2.4 of the tutorial series on AWS Cloud Formation. So guys, in the previous tutorial, we had seen the intrinsic function or the built-in function that we can use within conditions. So guys, now in this tutorial, uh, we will go through the conditions within template in AWS Cloud Formation. So uh, conditions is kind of self-explanatory, right? So when we want to perform anything when a certain criteria is met at that point of time, we can use conditions. So for example, you want to set certain property if the given condition is met. So in those cases or in those scenarios, we can opt out for conditions. Or maybe uh, let's say uh, we want to reuse the template that can create resources in different context, such as production environment versus other environment, right? So now for the production environment, uh, we might include Amazon EC2 instances with certain capabilities. And however, for other environment, uh, we want to use reduced capabilities to save money, right? So in those scenarios, we can opt out for conditions. So now let's try to understand it practically. Let's have a look at the template. So as you can see on my screen here, I have this template saying map.yaml. So this is the same template that we had in part 2.2 of this tutorial series. That is the tutorial for the mappings, right? So we are going to reuse this template. And based on this template, I have created this conditions.yaml template. It's the same template. Uh, we have not removed anything from this template. In fact, we had added few things over here. So I will take you through that, right? So here in this template, what we are doing is that we want to create and attach the storage volume of, for example, 100 GB for the production environment. So when the user go ahead and select the prod, right? Then the template should be able to create the new volume of 100 GB and it should be able to attach that volume to that production AWS instance, right? And when user selects anything other than prod, then the new volume should not be created and it should not be attached to the EC2 instance, right? So that is what uh, we want to achieve. So we are going to reuse this template for, uh, for example, dev environment, QA environment and the prod environment, right? So simple, if user selects the prod environment, then it should be able to create the new volume of 100 GB and it should be able to attach that volume to the EC2 instance. And if the user selects dev or the QA environment, then it should not create any volume and it should not attach any additional volume or storage to that instance, right? So it's that simple. So I have taken you through this template in mappings uh, tutorial, right? So I will quickly take you through the additional things that we have added. So uh, let me start with line number one. So here we have template version, description, and then we have parameters. So user should be able to select the uh, environment type that is dev, prod, and QA. And then we had mappings. If the user selects dev, then the instance type should be t2.large. And similarly for QA, it should be t2.medium. And then we have prod that should be t2.xlarge. Now here we had added one more thing that is conditions. So I will take you through in a moment. And then uh, we had resources uh, and resources we had defined the logical ID that is instance and the type is AWS EC2 instance because here we are trying to or because here we are creating the EC2 instance, right? And similarly, we had properties and then the instance type image ID. This is the Ubuntu image ID and then we had tags, right? So tags should also be able to uh, add the value appropriately based on the environment user selects, right? So if the user selects prod, then the name tag or the value of the name tag should be prod. If the user selects dev, then the value should be dev, right? So that's tags basically. And then we had outputs. So it basically returns the uh, instance ID. So uh, that's the overall template that we had in part 2.2. Now what we have added. So let's have a look at the resources. So within resources, uh, we have created uh, two logical ID that is a uh, mount point on line 39 and the new volume on line 49. So let's go through the mount point. So here uh, the type is basically AWS EC2 volume attachment. So this will basically attach the volume to the EC2 instance. And then uh, apart from type and the properties, we have one more thing that is condition, right? So this is how we can define the condition or we can uh, reference uh, to the conditions, right? So it should be condition colon create prod resources right now this is the logical id within condition so let's have a look let me copy and paste it over here and find it so here on line number 26 below mappings we have defined conditions and it says the logical id is create prod resources colon 
Now here uh, we have used the uh, exclamation equals and the uh, square braces which basically accepts two parameters. So here we are checking whether the given environment or the selected environment is uh, equal to the particular defined value or not, right? So here what we are doing is we are fetching a value from reference of environment. So here we will get the value from the parameters that the user will select. So here the allowed values is dev, prod and QA, right? So now for example, if the user selects prod, then it will check whether the prod is equal to prod or not. If it is true, uh, then it will move on. If it is not true, then it will skip, right? So that's the condition that we have defined that is equals selected environment should be equal to prod. So if that is equal, then the condition will be evaluated to true else it's going to be false, right? So that's basically condition. And this is how you can uh, reference to the given condition or the defined conditions, right? And then uh, on line 42, we have properties. Then uh, we have the instance ID that is a reference of instance that we will get from here from line number 30. Right. And then we have the volume ID and it says reference of new volume. So here we need to, so this is basically the mount one, right? It's, this is the procedure of attaching the volume to the EC2 instance. Now, uh, before attaching, we, we will also require the, uh, volume to be created, right? So that's where, uh, the volume ID is referring to reference of new volume. So it will go over here to the line number 49. That is new volume. That is logical ID for what? for the volume creation, right? So if you look at line number 50, its type is AWS EC2 volume, right? And then again, here we have the condition that is on line number 51, that is condition create prod resources. So now if the user has selected prod, then this condition is going to be true, then it will move on uh, with the creation of the same, right? And then on line number 52, we have the properties, we have defined the necessary properties that is size and the availability zone. So on line number 55, uh, we are fetching the attribute of what instance of the availability zone, right? So I know uh, we have not covered the get attribute uh, at this point of time, uh, but uh, just remember that it's, it is used to fetch the attribute of the uh, given uh, resource ID, right? Or the logical ID. So here we are trying to fetch the attribute of the instance, uh, which attribute that is availability zone, right? So I will cover get attribute in the upcoming tutorials, right? So don't worry. So uh, we were on line number 46. Now the new volume has been created, right? And then uh, we are saying the device that is slash div slash SDS, the mount point, right? So that's basically the mount point and the conditions and the new volume, right? So now uh, if this condition evaluates to false, then uh, it's not going to mount anything and even it's not going to create a new volume. So that's where we are using conditions within new volume as well as the condition within mount point. Right, so this is the overall template. This is uh, what we want to achieve. If the user selects prod environment, it should go ahead and create the new volume of 100 GB and it should mount that uh, volume to the instance ID, to the defined instance ID on line number 44, right? And if user selects anything other than prod, then it should not create a new volume. It should not create or go ahead and attach any volume, right? So that is what we want to achieve. So now let's have a look at it practically. So navigate to AWS management console and from there navigate to cloud formation and click on stacks from the left panel and say create stack. Now here we are going to upload a template file. We'll say choose a file. So here uh, my template file name is conditions.yaml. Now the file is uploaded successfully. Click on next. Here we need to define the stack name. So let me say, uh, let's go ahead and uh, select dev at this point of time, right? So I will say stack name is dev. I will select environment as dev. Now, uh, when the user selects anything other than prod, then it should not create an additional volume and we should not be able to see any attached additional volume to the EC2 instance that is going to create, right? So here I have selected dev. So click on next. Now here uh, we will leave uh, everything as it is. Say next. And finally we will say create stack. So the creation is being initiated. So let's wait.
so now as you can see uh, the creation of the stack is completed or the creation of the resources is completed so let's click on resources and click on this physical id it will take us to the ec2 management console to the uh, given instance so let's have a look so here we have the instance uh, with the name tag as dev right and the instance type is t2.large and now if we look at the storage over here so if i click on storage then it will have only one more volume that is by default volume that is of 8 gb right and there is no additional volume of 100 gb right so now what we will do is we will go back to cloud formation stack right and here on the top right corner we will say create stack with new standard resources right we will upload the same template choose a file select conditions.yaml and say next now here within stack name we will say prod and within environment we will select prod and say next next and we will say create stack now since uh, we have selected prod as the environment type now it will create the new volume and it will attach it to the given or the created instance right so here it will create a new ec2 instance and after that it will create a new volume and then it will attach that volume to that ec2 instance so let's wait so instance creation has been completed now it will create the new volume as you can see over here right new volume resource creation initiated now as you can see the mount point is uh, getting executed it means it's attaching a new volume that is created and the stack creation is completed now we can go to resources and we can click on the instance id right so now if you look over here then it also gives us the new volume id that is created right so let's go back to ec2 instance so now this is the prod instance that we have now if we go ahead and select this and look at the storage then here we will be able to see two volume right so one is by default that is eight uh, gigs of volume and the another volume of 100 gb right that is being attached right the status is attached right so uh, basically this is how uh, you can define your template or you can configure your template uh, uh, based on conditions right and this is how you can reuse the template for different environments and whatnot right so here basically in this video we have used only one condition that is equals right so let me know if you want me to do a separate tutorial on on the practicals of other intrinsic function right other intrinsic conditions function that we can use here right so let me know in comments if you want me to cover that too but at the high level this is conditions and this is how you can uh, define your con or configure your template right so guys uh, well uh, that's it for this tutorial and till that time if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time